So now that we know our beginning balances for each of the accounts given, we can go ahead and prepare our closing journal entries. Remember that you need to close all of a company, company's temporary accounts, which we identified through the acronym READY. We need to close all of the company's revenue accounts, which we see they have two, they have interest and fees earned. We need to close all of the company's expense accounts, which they have three, salaries, depreciation, and utilities. We need to close their dividend account, which was given. And finally, we need to close a company's income summary account. So we'll be preparing journal entries to close each of these four temporary accounts. So let's go ahead and start with revenue. So again, the company has two revenue accounts, fees earned and interest revenue. You can go ahead and combine the closing journal entry for both of these accounts into one journal entry, just to simplify the process for you. If you wanted to do the journal entry in two separate entries, that's also fine. The result will be the same. So since the uh, accounts, the revenue accounts, have a normal credit balance, we have to debit the accounts in order to get them to a zero balance. That's why you see the debit entries here for the full balance amounts in these accounts. The offset will be to income summary. This income summary account summarizes a company's income for the period, so you'll see the company's revenue and expenses in the next step. Okay, after you do that journal entry, you will post those two revenue accounts. So here we have fees earned and interest revenue. You can see we post the debit entries just made, which give us now a zero balance, which is our whole goal in closing journal entries, to get all of your temporary accounts to a zero balance. All right, let's go ahead on to closing our expense accounts. We had three expense accounts in this journal entry, salaries, depreciation, utilities. These balance amounts were given. So again, since expense accounts normally have a debit balance, we have to credit the full amount to get it to zero. The offset, income summary, that summarizes a company's revenue and expenses for the period. So now if we look at our T account for our expenses, you can see after we post the closing journal entries, the balance is now zero, which again is our goal. All right, let's move on to our next temporary account. I'm going to go ahead and do income summary next since we already know the balance. Let me show you what that is over here. You posted the $50,000 of revenue and the total expense account amount of $47,000. You have a remaining balance and income summary of $3,000. We need to get this account to zero. So if it has a normal or has a debit balance right now of $3,000, we're going to have to credit the account for $3,000. So let's look at that journal entry. There it is. Income summary, debit of 3000 and we move that to the company's retained earnings. Remember, the retained earnings account tracks the company's cumulative profits or losses over its life. So this represents, this 3000 represents the company's net income for the period, so it's going to increase retained earnings with that credit there. And now our income summary account is zero. Again, we want to make sure all of our temporary accounts are zero at the end of the period. We have one remaining account, that would be dividends. We were told the balance in dividends is 9200 that information was given. So if it has a normal debit balance, we're going to have to credit this account for 9200 to get it to zero. So the journal entry to do that is this last one right here, retained earnings for the full balance amount, 9200 we'll debit retained earnings for that amount. Since dividends decreases retained earnings, and retained earnings has a normal credit balance, so this debit decreases it. And then we want to credit the dividend account in order to get it to zero. So you'll see that journal entry successfully brings our last temporary account to zero. Let's go ahead and see what our retained earnings account looks like. We were told that we had a beginning amount, beginning credit balance of 35000 that was given. We then uh, increased this account for the $3,000 of net income, and then we decreased this account for the dividends that were paid out in the period. So you take the 35, add the 3, subtract the 9,200, and you find that your ending balance is 28,800. So that answers the question posed in the textbook. And that completes this problem.